Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft Resident Rise. Fire! <laughs> so, uh, welcome back. Um, today's going to be a little bit of a funny episode because I've sort of been playing on and off all day with some friends and uh, just doing some general remodeling of my home, just testing out this cool little running light effect, which is pretty simple. And I was remodeling this, discovering an interesting bug with remote I.O. You could use it exactly the way I used it. I was just... There's a weird bug where, well, like, check this out and see if I can do it. Here, get a block of sand and, like, go boom. And you can see it's actually uh, blue and it's connected, but if you touch it with your mouse, for some reason on my server, it turns red. Um, block updates fix it, but then it changes back. I'll report it to the author. Not a big deal, but, um, you know, a thing. Uh, so I've also just been doing a couple of random things like remodeling, um, just, you know, redoing some of the wood. I'm, I'm kind of just trying to do an intermediate thing while I wait for... Uh, other stuff to happen. Uh, my tree farm is still going. I've actually emptied out all the barrels, well, most of the barrels, into my AE system by hand. Eventually I'll have a better system than that, but for now it's just kind of going along on itself. And as you can see, we've just got tons of stuff. I've actually emptied all these once since the time I built it, and already we're here again. So that's pretty awesome, right? And uh, add a little extra room here just for exiting. Probably this whole area is going to get redone. You see, I'm, I'm slowly getting rid of the lake. Have an idea for a new fun build, but. Uh, haven't quite gotten to it there. We we're also talking about tearing down our Christmas trees. You know, it's almost time. Uh, even though that one, that one's pretty cool over there, I think, with a star on top. Uh, what's up, Murray? Uh, yeah, so what I wanted to do today uh, was show you how, how the enchanting build has progressed. I have resisted the temptation to finish the build off camera. Um, although what I have done is gone ahead and replumbed things, and as you can see, we've got um, Ender IO facades in here so that we can go through and actually finish up the item piping. So why don't we go ahead and make some of that? Uh, I think I have a bunch of it on hand, and I can auto craft some more. Which uh, hey, do you like the spruce? Yeah, I like spruce wood. It's like my favorite wood. Okay, uh, let's do like so. Um, conduit. So the stuff we want that's really awesome is this empowered item conduits. They're super good. And I can actually auto craft a bunch more. So why don't we go ahead and have that happen? Let's just make 20 pieces. Got 12 on hand. That should be enough for now and we'll have enough for later. Uh, oh, and I should, of course, recording. I should make some, I should make a better way of doing that. Maybe computer craft. Uh, can't wear the goggles though. Tricky. So uh, what we're doing here is we're just um, kind of gradually, uh, you know, solving all the issues with this system. And one of the things we want to do is make it so that this system has a way to automatically um, generate tools, uh, which is a thing we need access to for, we'll have to figure out some trick. Uh, we want to automatically generate tools and we want to automatically recharge the medallions in the system, which I think there's one in here that's maxed out. Yeah, level 30. Uh, we want to automatically charge the medallions and then place them in here. We want to make sure books are in here. And we want to make sure that um, well, we want to make sure that we can constantly supply with the enchantments. Now, I've also moved the, the filing cabinet over here and put any storage. We've gotten some amazing books coming off of this already, which is really, really cool. So I'm definitely enthusiastic about the uh, potential of this system. Uh, so let's go ahead and put one here. Oh, shoot. That's not what I want at all, is it? Uh, yes. Uh, I guess I'll just have to break this for a sec just to kind of get the angle I need. So what we're going to do is go ahead and use these awesome conduits from Ender.io to um to solve this the problem that we have at hand specifically the problem is is that we want to do a whole bunch of stuff in a very narrow space and uh, ender io actually really excels at doing that uh, you've seen me use it a couple different times let's just pop this off but i enchanted this guy with efficiency five on breaking three silk touch ones oh it's an amazing tool it's actually really really nice for just kind of a tool for walking around doing stuff it's not like a massive excavation tool but it's very fast and very, very good, and it's rechargeable. It's just, it's great. I'm very happy that I built these. Right, and then uh, finally, what we wanna do is um, we probably wanna get an ME interface in here that we can have this system talk to. So I'll make that in just a sec. But in the meantime, what we'd like to do at the very least is we'd like to have this uh, system, ex we'd have like to have this system, uh, I guess what we'd like to do is have it extract. Let's see, we can go down here. We'd like to have this extract. So it's going to be in out the extraction filter. We want to extract full medallions, and then over here in this system, we want to have it as an in out. This, and for the insertion filter, we want to insert whole medallions. 
Now, I think we want to make it, um, we don't want to make it do, we do want to make it match MBT data, and we want it to match metadata, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and um, toss this in here. It should automatically go over. Oh, no. Uh, well, we'll see what we can do here. So if we put this in here, it shouldn't get pulled out just yet. Oh, see, it did something random. And so now we have the empty one, and we have a book of Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Sharpness 3. Hum, I don't know about the Sharpness 3 part, but I'm pretty sure the Sonic the Hedgehog 4 sounds like a lot of fun. We'll have to see about that in a little bit. Um, but what we would like to do is have the extraction, which is should be always on, um, and we'd like it to extract. Do we have it? Do I have a client error, or where did it go? Ah, here. So it actually got pulled out there. Um, right, we would like to have it extract only uh, these sorts of things, matching metadata, but probably not matching, well, this is 9803, what was the other one? That's 9803.30. So we want to match metadata. And we also want it to, in the other one, we want it to ignore um, NBT data. So ignore NBT data, there we go. Um, for this, because we don't want it to do that. We want it to pull out enchanted books. So let me grab an enchanted book. Uh, we'll put it, we'll have it uh, be put in this file cabinet, the enchanted books. So let's go ahead and uh, lay out a little bit more item conduit. We can put one here. Well, you know what? Actually, no, we don't want to put it there. Check it out, by the way. I made an Omni wrench. Pretty cool, right? It's just a little electric wrench that also shears sheep. Just a little thing. Uh, let's go ahead and put this here and in there. And of course, what we'd like to have this do is only allow the insertion. Let's uh, grab one of these. Only allow the insertion of these books. So we want to insert um, these in sticky mode. And yeah, and it should um, ignore NBT data and metadata but it should be an enchanted book, right? So now, if we were to, so now that, should, that should do that correctly. Now we have the blank medallion and we wanna tell this system to insert the blank medallion. Uh, so in the insertion filter, of course, we want to have that and we want to match metadata and we should make it sticky. So what's gonna happen now is the blank medallions are gonna enter in here. They're gonna get full, full up and then they're gonna be inserted in here. So let's make sure that we don't have too, uh, also let's um, tell this to not extract, well, interesting. How do we do that properly? I, it looks like, um, I guess for the insertion filter, uh, insertion filter, we also want to insert books. Hopefully the inventory will be smart enough that it will understand how this all works and we don't have to have a thing on the side um, because that should allow us, so for the instruction, extraction filter, what we actually want to do, I think, is fill up another one of these guys, pull out the book so that it can't be used, and then fill up another one of these guys, and maybe make a blacklist instead? Yeah, that should probably be right. Let's give that a sec, and there. That should be extracted, or is it? Hmm, maybe the extraction is not on. It's, I always forget to do that. Oh yeah. Uh, we want it to be always active, and we would like to have this, I guess this, we want this to be a blacklist. We want this to be a blacklist, uh, well that's for the insertion filter, for the blacklist we want a blacklist regular books. All right folks, I spent some time um, trying to get this to work and it's just not working right. Uh, I think that ultimately these things are cited, and the Ender IO stuff honestly has sort of a weirdly hard time dealing with cited stuff. So um, what we're gonna do is, uh, well, you know what we're gonna do is do what we should have done uh, and turn, well, music was off. How, why did I hear that noise? I thought that, that was like music. Well, anyways, you can see I've dug out a hole here. Uh, we're gonna switch technologies here. And I'm actually really excited to play with this mod. I haven't gotten a chance, but this is Steve's factory manager. Uh, this is a mod that uh, VSWE did for Mod Jam, and not unlike my opinion of 
uh, Steve's cards. Steve's factory manager is amazing. And I don't think most of people, I, I'm surprised we don't hear more cries of Opness because this, you'll see, this mod's nuts. So what you need to get started with this is an inventory cable and an inventory machine manager. It's actually a fairly cheap thing. I suspect he'll integrate better recipes over time um, because this thing is absurdly cheap, but it's it's sort of like computer graphs in that it can do everything, but it's all it's more like um, Steve's carts in that it can do everything, but, uh, and it's not even that particularly expensive for what it does. But it um, is, is, is not very easy to use. You need a lot of work. So we're going to put the manager up here. And you can see that we don't understand. It doesn't really understand anything yet. And there's a big, complicated interface that we'll get to in a sec. But to connect things, we have to use these big, weird-looking blocks, right, um, which are the inventory pipes. Uh, these things are not beautiful. They're, in fact, pretty hideous. Uh, but that's okay because we're going to bury them nice and deep in the floor. And if we like this system, this will probably be the basis for all subsequent work that we do because I think this is going to be a mod that we use for a lot of stuff. Right. So now that connects all the pieces that we're currently interested in. We may put an inventory, uh, uh, I guess, a ME inventory right there so they can interact with our ME system too. But let's just start with the basic workflow. And... Um, Let's grab a chest as well. All right, I've got a chest and I've closed up the floor and I'm pretty sure we've got what we need here. Uh, yeah, let's grab one of these. We have an empty medallion. Now you see the problem was is that I uh, there's not a lot of space for this build. And I saw here that when I put the, um, when I use the ender eye cables, it put things in the wrong place. This is an empty medallion that shouldn't be able to get there, All right? Um, so what we're going to do is look at this thing. So now we've connected all these things by having an inventory manager block touching it. And now we should see uh, if we create an input, which is basically some an input into the system, we should see a ton of target inventories uh, here. It, well, I guess four is not a ton, but um, we should see that we have our filing cabinet, our uh, LXP enchanter, and our LXP imprinter, which is right there. Uh, so all these things are there. Now, what we want to do is we, what you do is you set up a trigger. A trigger can be all sorts of things, but uh, most importantly, a trigger is um, an interval or a redstone connection. So we've got an interval. Let's make this happen just for the sense of the server. Let's make it happen every 10 seconds. That seems like a pretty good number, right? Uh, and let's go ahead and move this up here because we're going to need a lot of room. The input is basically where something can come into the system. So what we're going to say is, Steve's factory manager, please look inside the LXP imprinter. So we select that. And now you'll see that there are kind of a distance thing. You can actually, if there's multiple identical, th identical things, you can check your map and make sure that you understand where that is. Uh, we are going to say the LXP imprinter. I would like you to pull from the down. Uh, click to use this side. Okay, down. The bottom side. I would like you to pull uh, pretty much anything that's there. The bottom side is pretty much fair game. Um, and then I would like you, yeah, so basically I'd like you to pull from the down. Uh, we could, by the way, to be super cool, we could say, we could look for a medallion. And we could say here we've got a whole bunch of different medallion types. What we'd like to do is pull imbued medallion level 30, I guess. That's interesting that all three of these are in here. That's cool, actually. So we'd like to pull level 30 medallions uh, out. Um, and then we would like to, so, that, so we would like to put them into an output. Let's create an output right here, as you can see. Um, and that output is an inventory, in this case, the LXP Enchanter. We'd like to have it target the uh, the west up, the up. Put it in the top. Because uh, it looks like that's what the side is that it really wants. OK. And um, now what we do is we just basically uh, drag this over here, and we tie these all together by touching these two things together, uh, like so. We, we basically click one and click the other. Um, I wish that there was a labeling system for this, uh, but th so far, this is a really amazing GUI for Minecraft. I mean, this is totally nuts, right? Um, but yeah, so that's our first workflow. It's going to go to the output, no problem. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is a really simple line. So now, basically, whenever there is a... Um, Whenever there is a empty medallion in there, it's going to get processed and put over there. So this takes a few seconds to cook up. So we'll let that cook up, and it, we should in a second see it arrive over there. While we're doing that, let's set up a temporary book uh, mechanism. 
Um, for now, we're going to say that it's going to come from the chest, but we'll build the workflow and then later on replace it with an ME auto crafter that will try and keep some stuff in there. So check this out. This is cool. Uh, we'll make a trigger just like before, uh, like so. Can I make the trigger or are we just experiencing lag? All right, folks, so uh, next we need to get the books, empty books, stocked into the system. So from the, I guess it's that we need to insert on the east side? No, west side. Uh, so that's pretty easy to do. We just have a trigger, an input, which is this chest. Um, and we really don't have to care about pulling out anything, but let's just go ahead and make it the book, the book for now. Right, and then of course we have an output uh, right here, which naturally is the LXP Enchanter west side, and that is for book. Pretty simple. I like that you don't have to have, and it should be a whitelist, of course. I like that you don't have to have the items on hand. I think that's fantastic. Uh, oh, and we want to um, stock, I think, a specific amount. We can say uh, targets, let's see, connections. Mm. Right, if you go like this, book. And we specify an amount with a right click. So let's just say we want to keep one in there at all times, right? Um, and then we can go ahead and connect these things. And then da -da, we're going to have the books be inserted on the east side once the trigger is connected. Uh, it looks like it is. Input, items, whitelist. What's the problem? No direction. Ah, of course. Uh, we'll pull from this, I guess, the down. And what we should see is books being pulled out and inserted on the west side, although maybe they need to go in the top. Tough to say. Because, yeah, what should happen is it immediately, yeah, it immediately goes focus punch, smite four, Sonic the Hedgehog. So cool. So top is the input side for this device. Um... Now let's go ahead and put this back in. So finally, I'm just going to really quickly do the thing that puts these, uh, I'm going to put the enchanted books, I'm going to pull it out of the bottom and put it into the uh, filing cabinet. Let me do that really quick. And just like that, we now have a system that should be starting to uh, pull out items. Um, the real trick here is just figuring out what side. So does it want to pull me to pull this out of the west? There we go. So as you can see, we pulled it out and we are now refilling this. And that's going to go back in and it's going to try and keep books in there. As and, and we've already been making all these books, right? So now another one's going to end up back in there. And we should have our really cool super book uh, ending back up in there really fast. And let's go ahead and toss this. We should be able to put this in here. And after a moment, it should vanish. Although I'm not sure. Yeah, there it goes. As you can see, every 10 seconds it tries to pull out. I'm not sure which side it's pulling from that's successful, but it sort of doesn't matter in this case. It's a little sloppy on the build side, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, but yeah, so now all we have to do is set up a system uh, wherein we keep um, working within the limits of uh, these swords and books. Now, the problem is, is that every sword I've tried has been annihilated in the process. So I'm thinking that maybe what I want to do is try using a sword that has a pretty good enchantment value, but is a little bit more du durable. Uh, Metallurgy actually adds silver swords. So what we can do is uh, if we were to grab a stick, uh, let's just, I guess we need to craft some sticks, surprisingly. Let's just craft 10, which we can't exactly do, but you know, whatever. And uh, maybe some silver. Maybe we could use silver since we have an awful lot of it. Perhaps that would be, it has a pretty good enchanting value and a lot more durability than gold. So maybe that would be, and also it's very good against werewolves. So perhaps that could be the way that we solve this problem. Uh, and let's go ahead and toss this in there, right? And uh, no, we, it's annihilated in the process, unfortunately. So it looks like no matter what, we're going to have to, I wonder what we just got. That's the one downside of the system. Uh, we can't necessarily see, oh man, we got so many cool, look at all these cool, oh my gosh. Unbreaking, so protection, power, 
potency. We probably got a book of unbreaking there. That's probably what we got. We're going to have to figure out uh, an item. Um, it doesn't really matter because all I need to do is go ahead and grab a crafting interface and I could just let it run like it does right now uh, and just start picking up all sorts of fun um, and chance to put on things. And then we can start pulling them apart with the splitter. And then you can also actually recombine them. So for example, uh, I'm not sure if this will actually, well, I don't really wanna risk that. Let me go grab a pair of boots and we'll just try one of these goofy enchants on. Right, folks, I got a fresh set of gold boots here. So we can use this in the combiner along with this uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Sharpness 3 book. Sort of doesn't matter with the sharpness. Um, we could easily work that out, but this system is pretty happy to put whatever you want on whatever you want. So we can go ahead, yeah, as you can see, it'll just discard the ones that don't work. So now we have these Sonic the Hedgehog boots. This is an uh, enchantment from Mariculture, which is a mod I haven't really played with very much. So let's see, how do we, how do we get this to work? Oh, I get it. So I just have to hold the Mariculture boost key. And whoa, I go flying around. Whee! This is actually pretty good. This is a pretty good enchant. So this is the Sonic the Hedgehog enchant from Mariculture. Oh man, that's fun. I may actually have to see if I can get this working on my blood armor. It might work even though, even though it's not supposed to. We'll have to see. Now that we can. So maybe what I should do is actually not put a tool in there for now and just go ahead and finish the book crafting part. So let's go ahead and do that. But first, let me just put back on... I wonder why the skin server's down. Let's go ahead and put back on, I should, uh, our regular armor and get the interface that I started crafting a little while ago. Should be really easy to just toss in here. We, this is still pretty fast. I like the speed, not bad at all. Um, it should be trivial to add because all we have to do is uh, toss this in here and then um, grab a book. And we'd like to say to keep one book uh, exported and we have to say uh, craft crafting mode crafts and exported and it shouldn't need to do anything else so now if we look in here uh, we will find that a new input has a wild input has appeared which is uh, this thing right here and so all we have to do like we don't actually have to use this at all all we have to do is find our uh, book one which I believe is this one uh, inventories yeah and instead of using that we just say this uh, run a shared command once Per, oh, and we just unturn that off. There we go, because we could run multiple inventories. Uh, we could actually run it, uh, run command once per target. Uh, no, let's run a shared command once. That'll be better. So there we go. Now we're actually automatically doing everything. So now this entire system is 100% automated. Although it appears to be that the book is being inserted in the wrong place. That's pretty easy to fix too. All we have to do is um, output into a target. Well, you see, it should be not be the up. And we pull that out. There we go. That's going in the right place now. Perfect. Oh, this is really cool, guys. Look at this. This is so freaking automatic. Now, it, we're going to eventually run out of liquid XP, and so the system is just going to kind of slowly trickle along, barely making do with what we have, and it's going to consume all of our liquid XP. So probably what we should do is make sure that we reserve a little bit. Um, but yeah, so now this system has already netted us a whole bunch. And this will just keep making books for as long as my system can tolerate making books. I wonder what we got. Like there's just so many books here, Leapfrog, Sharpness. Um, and we sort of don't care about anything else. Although we could of course target it. So I think that what's neat about this is we could just toss in a thing. Like for example, we could toss in these Sonic the Hedgehog golden boots. They're not that valuable to us. Uh, this thing will clear up in just a sec. Boom, happens so fast you could barely see it. But it does happen. We could probably, I'll off camera set the um, timing of these things a little bit lower because it could probably stand to be a little bit faster. But with that folks, this is pretty dang cool because we've got this entire system automated like clockwork. It's easy on the system. We're using all of our resources. We're getting a ton of books. We have tons of storage. It's integrated with AE. I mean, I don't know what more you could ask for from an auto enchanter. And what's even, even better is that this whole system is predicated on uh, our existing blood drive, which already is, is making a ton of benefit for us. So really the whole thing is just super cool. Um, with that, folks, I think we've probably gotten really close to the wrapping up point. Um, I'm trying to make my episodes a little bit shorter. Uh, I will have a little bit of, like, um, I'm trying to make it a little bit shorter because I'm trying to have three episodes a week that are shorter rather than two episodes a week that are slightly longer. You can tell me in the comments, please do, if you like that idea or if you prefer the 30-minute factor. Um, I just, what's that hole doing there? 
weird. I've just noticed that it seems like people, I get a lot more uh, engagement from folks. People seem to enjoy it more when I have slightly shorter episodes and more of them, or if I do more episodes a week. I can't do three 30-minute episodes a week. It's just not possible. Um, anyways, please do leave a like or a subscribe if you enjoyed and would like to see more of this. I'll be doing more. Sace has been consulting with me about redoing the outside of my base, and I think we have a fun idea. Um, I'm also thinking that I'm going to be using Steve's factory manager a little bit more soon. My big gating factor on books is um, reeds. So next we're going to make a farm to automate the planting of reeds, probably to automate the planting of all of our plantables using Steve's carts. We're also going to be making a bunch of Galgadorian tools, so I'll be mining a bunch off camera between now and the next episode. Folks, with that, I'm going to say I hope that you join me next time.